Hi guys! Welcome to Lazarski Talks. It's Monday, it's 6 p.m. and we're welcoming you here as always. I'm gonna start with the technical issues as always. The first thing, we all are corona free, so we're sitting without the masks, we can touch each other, hug each other, not that I really want to hug you today, <laughs> but still, we can do that. The second thing, if you want to ask something, you know that you can text us to the Instagram or to the microfo microphones, Microsoft Teams, and we're going to read these questions to our wonderful guest, who I'm going to introduce in a second. The third thing, remember that our guest will choose the best question from you today, as always, and you have an opportunity to get some cool stuff from our marketing department. So. What's going to be happening today? I have Deepan Shalakman here with me for the second time. Thank you very much for being with me as a co-host. And today, for this hour, we're going to have a wonderful conversation with a girl who uh, very kindly agreed to come to us to this studio and that we're so happy to have here today and that we're going to talk to and that you're going to talk to as well. So we're more than happy to welcome an alumni of Lazarski University of 2014, Darina Brajnik. Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs> so, this is, uh, this is Darina, and uh, thank you very much again for being with us. You want to say something to introduce yourself? Yeah, no, I'm uh, super stoked to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm uh, humbled uh, and a little nervous, so for, for, forgive the tremor. Um, yeah, and you said tw to 2014, and I was like, damn, that was such a long time ago. Yeah. Just, you know... Uh, kind of, uh, yeah, just dawned on me, the realization. <laughs> but yeah, super stoked to be here, super stoked to talk to you guys. What we're going to talk about, what we're going to do today in general. So the topic of today's talks uh, will be related to the labor market, mm, to the working sphere, what to do when you finish the university, what does it feel like when you have this diploma finally in your hands and you can or hand it to your parents or put your cup of coffee on that or go to the future employee and to be actually employed. So this is the topic we're going to talk about today. And uh, the first thing that we want to share with you today, just you know, to show that we have a cool girl here today, uh, Darina actually took a place in a thesis competition and we're asking uh, guys from that side to show us the picture of this um, of this diploma that Darina got. Right. And uh, in the meantime, can you tell us a little bit about this thesis stuff? That, yeah, exactly. Guys, so this is, we can see here, new economic talent, you know? That's, that is a cool thing. It's not a joke or something to you. So the Center of Economic Research and Graduate Education, Economics Institute, Institute and Certificate. Thank you very much for showing that. So can you tell us a little bit about this thing? How did you get it? What did it take you to write the thesis? Was it boring? Was it hard? Did you love it? And stuff about that. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, that was uh, that was an interesting uh, moment in my life because, I mean, I was writing my bachelor project um, together with, uh, I mean, I was supervised by Dr. Beck. Uh, shout out to Dr. Beck. Um, <laughs> And uh, I, I was sort of trying to find this way to combine uh, like my love for psychology and then the fact that I'm studying at economics department and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't succeed in that combination because that would be behavioral economics and I decided to go full econometrics uh, oh. <laughs> uh, full, full speed. Um, so I was writing about inflation expectations and I was sort of uh, comparing that the rationality um, behind inflation expe expectations of two countries so a hard stuff just a hard yeah, no massively hard. hardcore <laughs> economics yes stuff. yes i mean economics is uh, economics bit it was fine econometrics bit was uh, nasty but we um you. we can feel you here <laughs> yeah 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 i mean it's generally tight so um but yeah that was that was fine uh and then you know was, i've sort of been producing 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 more of the of that stuff and then you know dr Beck was like yo there's this uh, competition in czech republic in this university uh, it was the first year they were doing this competition mm, and he was like maybe you want to sort of shorten the paper a little bit submit the abstract and see how it goes and i was like i mean uh, whatever sure <laughs> so i've done that uh and then they've invited me over for the for the finals um yeah, I think there were there was a bunch of us. Mm, 
I took a, a second spot. That was pretty cool. Um, and actually, in fact, uh, I think in 2019, when the traveling was still okay, they had a reunion, like five year reuni reunion of this new economic talent thing. So nice. I went back to, to Prague uh, to just hang out with people who are into economics. Cool super eclectic experience because everybody was stayed in research you know they all sort of went on to doing their masters and phds and whatever else and i went into the world of business <laughs> so i was like don't have a paper to show but can talk to you about money <laughs> if you're into this so can you sh just tell us a little bit i'm sorry i'm taking your question yeah. away just like i always do here uh what did you do after you finished lazarus university because you finished the bachelor here not the master mm -hmm. and uh what happened next Okay, well, next uh, uh, life took me on a on a journey uh, because I moved I moved to Latvia. I had some uh, personal circumstances leading me there, um, and I went to study masters there in Latvia and Riga uh, in international business, which was uh, honestly much easier. I mean, disclaimer, word of disclaimer. I don't know if, if that's uh, an experience for many people, but masters for me was infinitely easier than the bachelor studies here. Like bachelor program here is really hardcore. So if you guys are struggling. That's normal. <laughs> uh, it's it's a it's a pretty tough uh, program. Um, so yeah, and uh, I went on to uh, to this uh, university, uh, and in parallel, like it's it's a pretty cool thing they do in Latvia because master studies are scheduled that way that you sort of this is like evening studies and weekends, so you kind of can have a full time job. So I went straight into the <laughs> Latvian workforce. Um, yeah, and that's how my journey began seven years ago of uh, building up my career. Cool. Uh, That's awesome. You want to go on? With yeah, the, the like next finally, question. finally, yeah. I have chance to speak after a very, very long <laughs> you time. You can say hi, speak. everyone. Hi, sure. everyone. It's me. <laughs> so uh, I have a really interesting question about your area of interest. So would you like to shed a light on startup culture? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> generally, my work experience was a little bit. Mm, hectic, mm -hmm. if I can put it that way. Uh, but startup culture, because I mean, I have uh, super contrast experiences in, in the past uh, in the past couple of years. I've spent about three and a half years in a, uh, in a Polish startup here working in um, uh, customer success role. And uh, startups are really cool. Super cool. This is such a it's such a great vibe. It's uh, a lot of independence. It's a lot of fun. A lot of young people, but also a lot of instability, right? Because yeah. uh, you know today you're you're going great, and then you know you don't close your Series A. You're out of business tomorrow, and um, uh, you got to go and find yourself. Uh, some other place to make a living um so for like a foreigner it's a it's always been a bit of a trade-off right do i trade the fun and sort of the independence but an ability to sort of have fun with your life have fun with my life but at a cost of you know losing it all over yeah, overnight yeah, exactly uh or do you go into a more sort of corporate vibe where you have stricter rules sure you don't have as much freedom but you do have this uh, uh much higher stability and this is always right. a trade-off that everybody's choosing uh between what would be your financial pers uh, financial perspective on like when you're working for a startup and when you're working for a corporation is there a big difference like contrasting difference between the salaries that they give mm -hmm. you or Oh, that's a great question. I think it very much depends on what startup you work for and what corporation you work for, because there is okay. no one thing that, uh, you know, if you go to work for XYZ, like if you go to work in, in a corpo, you're going to make a, a crazy money. Uh, and if you're going to work in a startup, it's going to be more for a thank you note and a chance to change the world. Uh -huh. um, so a lot of people don't understand the fact that like you can actually make really, really good money in a startup, especially if uh, the startup later on sells, you've got your shares, you sell your shares, cash in big time and you're fine. Um, and then there's also corporations that pay you tiny money and exploit you like crazy 16 hour mm -hmm. uh, work days. And it's, it's normal for a thank you note of a pay. And then there are corporations that pay you very decent money. So right. there is no straight answer, uh, but uh, I think it's important to break that stigma that in a, in a startup you can't make money and you can make money only in a corporation. You can make money anywhere. It just depends on which field you're in. All at. right. That, that's cool. I would like to add one more question related to this. So when the people are graduating, students are graduating from the university, mm -hmm. what would you suggest them? Would they aim for the corporate or if they either they want to learn or have fun with their life? So they, they should join the startup for like maybe one year, two years, and then they can, because there is always a possibility that the big corporations are always going to be there. But mm -hmm. the startup opportunity, it comes and it goes. So like, what do you say about that? 
Well, I think if we're looking at the local market here in Poland, uh, I mean, we're in a great place right now mm -hmm. in terms of uh, the labor market conditions and generally uh, what we're seeing here in, in Poland, in Warsaw specifically, because there is plenty and plenty and plenty of startups and they just keep popping up and actually getting some investments, getting some recognition from the Western, you know, the, the Western dollars, mm -hmm. uh, which is always great. Um, so, and then, you know, corporations are also expanding uh, rapidly into Poland, building up new offices, actually like hiring people, not just as an outsource type of thing, but actually building up the offices here. Right. So I think it just depends on what is your vibe, right? What it is that you want to do after, after university. Do you want to start building up a, like a corporate career? Do you need structure? in your life and this is what you're after or are you okay with chaos because startup inherently is chaos a little bit right and corporation is chaotic but in a much more structured way so there's right. also Ve that bit. very well put like structure and chaos just kids keep in, keep that in mind and with that being said we will move to our next question can i can i ask one question that is just uh, about the startup n about the the thing when you finish the university and like you, yeah, yeah okay you go come ahead. to this uh, so when you finish the university bachelor master whatever because a lot of people don't really go to masters because bachelor is enough yeah so you finish the university and you are entering this labor market. You're completely shocked, uh, I think, c confused. So what should we do later? Mm -hmm. So share with us, because I know that some students actually asked me to ask this question to our guest when they got to know the topic we're going to talk about today. How does it feel like? And what are what is happening? Do people really ask for a diploma when they uh, when you are applied for a job? Do they ask mm -hmm. about the skills more or where it is easier to go to the startup, to the corporation or to the university, whatever? Sure. Yeah, no, this is a good question. I think it's important for you to remember to stay humble because if you were the it girl at university, you enter the labor market and you're just starting from scratch. So it is important for you to remain humble and take um, an entry level position. Like you gotta be real, you're not gonna come in as a director just because you hold, uh, and I don't know, you were an A star student at a university. Yeah. That's, right. nobody, nobody yeah, cares exactly. for that. Um, so when I entered, I mean, I didn't have much of a choice because uh, I moved to Latvia, uh, I started university and it was sort of like a, an agreement that I'm gonna have to find a job so I found a job. I started um, in a fintech company. Mm -hmm. um, I started in a in help desk thing, so like customer service. And then you know this is this is just your entry entry point, right? You just need to get to the place where you think you're going to fit. Because also, let's be real. Who knows what they want to do after university? I mean, maybe doctors do because they spend a crazy amount of time, like digging in things. So I get that they probably know what they want to do with their lives, but like more soft skill um, degrees. Are you certain? Do you want to do what? Do you know what I mean? So it's just like a lot of trying and a lot of luck. I think you also need to yeah. just take into account that you're just going to be, you're just going to be lucky at some point to get to, to whatever place you get to. Um, my, I don't think, oh no, I think they verified my degree uh, for some reason. Which was fine. I mean, the, the Lazarski doesn't give out fake degrees, so you guys are safe. It's <laughs> yeah. fine. Uh, <laughs> you could get a job with that thing. Uh, and I, I mean, because I worked in a fintech company first, so it was like, you know, sort of a profile yeah. job. You know, I finished economics. I wanted to work in a fintech. That was, that was okay. That was nice. But after that, I've changed a bunch of industries. And what, what, was the, what was the best one? For, what is your favorite so far? Oh, favorite industry so far? Oh, Jesus. I mean, I've pivoted into the world of IT. Um, about four years ago and uh, I've been I've been you know surfing that wave it was nice um, I mean I'm in cloud right now and I'm really enjoying that I think this is a super innovative uh, uh, innovative uh, industry and a place mm -hmm. to be really for the next couple of years so awesome it's always good to be in clouds oh uh, yeah my <laughs> head up in the skies in the clouds all yeah. the time for me correct <laughs> that's awesome all right so uh, coming up to a very next uh, and important I economically important question right here so sure. what do you think about a labor market reality since you finished like mm -hmm. in 2014 you finished and now it's almost after seven years i don't know how they flew as well so uh please uh, please give us information about how has it changed and uh, how should the students prepare for it mm -hmm. yeah absolutely um i think it's important to understand 
the fact that like Poland is gaining, uh, if we're talking just Poland and Warsaw, when the students are looking to stay stay here after the studies, which I totally recommend because I don't know other countries in Europe. I might be just not educated in that uh, in that department, but now it's going to be a little bit of an ad <laughs> for Poland, uh, since there's this law that you don't need to have uh, a work permit after you finish a Polish university. Yeah. This is a life changing thing, really, because it gives you just so much more freedom and so much more. Mm, confidence i guess in how you you know if you're if you have a beef with your manager you're not going to pack up your shit and go back to ukraine do you know what i mean yeah okay. um so this is this is a super cool thing in poland and since this country is gaining um, a wider um recognition uh, i guess on generally in the world and like recognizing that there is great talent here and all there's a lot of um companies a lot of vacancies and not that much talent so i think right now it's actually a a better time to enter the the market than it was when I was finishing the university. I think right now exactly. there's just more opportunities. That's an interesting point, by the way. I think it is very, yeah. very interesting point. And the fact that the Poland is like the number one fastest growing economy in Europe and the second best skyline city here. So, yeah, it gives all the necessary points to stay here, guys. Uh, just take a chill pill. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah go ahead. on uh, go on LinkedIn, go on Pratsui.pl and uh, knock yourselves out. Yeah, you hear guys, the second guest here is talking about the LinkedIn. So if you don't have the LinkedIn, yeah, you have to have LinkedIn. Yes. If it's you don't have it, have it. It's like there's no other. Even way. if you hate it, even if you hate it with the whole heart, it is just very, very important to have it. Yeah, um, sure. Can I go with the, with the next question? Yeah, yeah sure. Mm, so you have quite a huge work experience. And uh, you finished the business economics here, and your master's was in international business. international business. So business management, economic stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you prefer? Is just you know a question that I had uh, to own and rule the company, or just to be a good executor? Yeah, no, this is a great question, and I mean, if you're, if I look back at my career, it's always been the the latter option for me. Um, because uh, I think just the pressure of like owning the company, owning the strategy and being responsible for whoever you employ, because eventually you're going to end up employing people too, uh, to me is just too great. I think I would just crumble under the pressure. So I'm like, you be the <laughs> owner, you hold the money and I'm just going to work with that. So I'm just asking because if you had this experience with the startup, you know how it looks like from the inside and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, these people who are taking this crazy responsibility for, for especially, you know, young age, whatever. So they're taking this responsibility. So I was always, it is always interesting for me to ask people if you want to do that or not, because I would never, ever go and choose it. Uh, it's just too right. hard for me. But I think you also need to be like crazy passionate about this, yeah. right? Because if you are the, the owner, uh, especially if it's a startup, especially if we're talking high tech, things move so fast. You have to stay on top of your industry, on top of your game, on top of your niche at all times, because the minute you stop doing so, you become obsolete and you get out of out of business. So I even think, sounds scary. Like, like how do they, how do they do this? But then if you're passionate, it doesn't sound yeah. like a chore yeah. to you. It's like it's a natural sort yeah. of, you know, it's an arm extension, if you like. Exactly. Um, so in that space, I guess it's fine. It's yeah. And like along with having passion. the passion, you have to keep other areas in your mind as well, like so that you do not burn out because mm. there's a point in life. doesn't matter how much you're passionate about something. If you overdo it without keeping your other areas of life interesting, you're going to burn out. So, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Did you have anything like this? A burnout. Yeah. Oh God. Yes. Um, I think right now, especially with this whole pandemic and the things became so blurry between where your pers personal life ends and your work life begins, because frankly, it's all happening in the same square meters. The same right, bed. Right. Uh, so it's, um, uh, burnout is like a real thing. A lot of people talk about right now because burnout, depression, um, mental problems, all of that has become much more real, especially in the light of pandemics. Um, and I did, I did, I did burn out in my previous job <clears throat> and I mean, I didn't deal with it well. I just changed jobs because I was like, oh, you know, once you're done, you're done. And, um, uh, right, right. so, so you recommend just to do when you're done, you just leave it and you go and you move forward. I think there always comes this one morning, you know, because uh, I've, you're, if you're burning out or like, you're never going to be a hundred percent satisfied with everything that is happening. It's just in our human nature. Um, but there's always this one morning where you wake up and you're like, done. Now I'm done and I'm moving on to greener pastures or 
not greener pa I'm just moving on whatever <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so once that happens uh, you just change jobs see. this is how it's always been for me all right uh, that that raises a little a little question for here that working from home and working mm -hmm. from office mm -hmm. what would you do and why yeah great question I'm a, I'm a fan of the hybrid uh, scenario here because um, I mean when you're constantly working from home it's just it's it becomes boring at some point you know you're wearing the same pajamas you don't really have any reason or effort to make yourself do anything you're getting this crazy zoom fatigue and all of that right um but also if you need like concentration and you just uh, you're not feeling super well so you'd rather stay home do your like miscellaneous things and and whatnot that's great that's nice to have that option to, to right. work from home but i do sometimes go to the office just you know to get that to get that vibe yeah exactly like that's the hybrid. The being hybrid is like the best thing because you mm. can have the good of both sides meeting people networking in the office and like the comfort that you have so yeah that that's the perfect thing uh can i go with the next one yeah yeah sure. did you work during your studies i did yes yes um tell us something about that not you, you probably we're not asking about what exactly you did but about this whole wipe wipe vibe of uh, you know connecting the studies and the work is it possible do you think people should enter the labor market as soon as possible especially with this knowledge that they're getting during the education so just like you know day by day mm -hmm. yeah absolutely i think it depends what are you doing your masters for are you doing it to sort of take it off the uh, off the list and get these extra years of experience so you get 26 days of uh, paid vacation on the mobile <laughs> práce? Because <laughs> if you're doing that, then you're fine to go and work and just do your thing. Also, I mean, at least in my experience, master's is not necessarily about learning. You learn stuff during bachelor studies, right? It's hard. It's complex. You've just, you know, been removed from your parents by force. And now it's a brave new world of, um, you know, adult life uh, masters you're sort of kind of accustomed to the vibe and it's not they're not gonna teach you i don't know at least they didn't teach me anything revolutionary um so i, w I was i was happy that i did what i did and i started working like during during the during the studies and i could start building up my career earlier um it is challenging of course because you still have your school projects you still have your thesis to write your internships to pass uh, you still have the literal hours you need to put into the classes right. plus you have your eight uh, uh, hour days minimum that you need to go through yeah so it depends also on the program right because some programs are sort of work friendly some aren't and if they aren't i would suggest to stay away off the stay off the not, labor not market to burn out from both of these things because you're not going to enjoy either one of them and exactly. it's, it's it's pointless that way Okay, but you know, actually, I've, because I, I talked to some uh, students from time to time, and especially on the bachelor, well, I think the amount of the students reduce uh, the, the, the people who are working during their bachelor. Mm -hmm. But uh, I get some questions from the students like, okay, so it's possible to, to, to work during your master's. So yes, you see that it's possible and you see that uh, it is very recom recommendable. Re recommended. Recommended yeah. thing <laughs> if you want to just go straight away to this whole new adult world and just to uh, try yourself because another point that I, I would like to make here is that you know masters is just for two years and the sooner you start the the sooner you can understand what's more for you because just as you mentioned it's not the medical faculty right so you need to just make up your mind a little bit and understand what's for you what's not for you yeah absolutely. you'll never exactly. understand it from the classes I suppose right. No, so. for sure. So I think it's a good idea to actually, because I have some friends who took like a gap year mm -hmm. between the bachelor and the master's. And then, you know, they've gone full speed into the master's having some... What do you think about the gap year, by the way? I think this is an excellent idea. I think it's an excellent idea. And I wish I took a, a gap year. Really? Oh, I that's, do. That's I quite do. contrasting because uh, usually, or like we as a student, taking a gap year basically means wasting one year. Like I would have done my master's like in one more year, I would be out of there. But like you saying, it's a good idea. All right. So like, why? Yeah, why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were like sure. to know why. Because <laughs> it's um, um, just just for a second. A gap year, if if someone just doesn't know about that. So a gap year is just a year of freedom, right? When you finish your bachelor and you don't study and you're taking the gap year and then you just go for for masters or whatever you like so it's called the gap year just you know yeah <laughs> uh, just a piece of the definition why yeah. you why you think it's a great thing i think it just allows you to experience because i mean university 
is a little bit of an artificial world, right? Uh, your whole life evolves around whether or not Professor X gives you a passing mark uh, or not, and th this is your concern. Are you going to finish the, the year without retakes or like re-exams or whatever else? Or you need to ask your parents to pay for that course yeah. once again. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then you just get out into the real world and real life and you understand like, you know, there are mm, bigger things happening, yeah. uh, things you need to consider. And this is, I think, a great way for you to also learn what it is that you like. And it is kind of, do you mm -hmm. think it changed the attitude to the master later on? I think so. I think yeah. you're just going there much more self-aware. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. do you think that it is a high possibility and a high chance if you take the gap year and you start working and you're like, oh, I don't need that. I'm not going to go for the master. Uh, you're not likely to go into the, ma like, I mean, there is a chance that you're not going to go into the master's like next year after this, just this one gap year. Uh, you might go there five years, seven years later, but th that master you're going to take, you're going to take in the exact subject you want to take it yeah, in. Exactly. That's, that's, um, that's nice. Yeah, point. exactly. Th this makes sense because if you just take one year off, so you are not losing the touch with the studies which you studied in the bachelor's, right? Mm -hmm. If you take it out, like after five years, you get a, a fresh start. Mm -hmm. So that would be a little harder, but uh, this is a very interesting point because I also thought like gap year is just a total waste. But now I understand that when you finish your bachelor's, then you come into the real world because we have experienced it both like this is not a spoon feeding when you just go out there, when you see the world. And uh, as you mentioned that in bachelor's, it, it's all about getting the marks. Mm -hmm. But when you go out, nobody is giving you marks. It's all by yourself. So just for the self-realization phase, I think one year is a really excellent thing to do. And uh, even I, I got this fact today. So like, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> you no, know, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy. I get right. We still are encouraging everyone to go to the Master's yeah, University University or something. <laughs> 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 yeah, 100%. So, you want to ask a question or because we already have some questions. How about the, uh, the students? Cool. So I'm going to go with the first one. And yeah. we have a question. How the experience of moving countries can help a person, you in this case, to find the starting point of a work life? Oh, wowzers. Okay. That's a great question. Thank you for that. Um, I've never really correlated me moving places with my work life, you know? Okay. I've just been very random. I mean, I've been jumping, like, because Latvia and uh, Poland are not the only two countries I've lived at. So, um, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> um, I think it's just about broadening your horizons. At the end of the day, it's all about broadening your horizons and just knowing what it is that you want, what it is that, which direction you want to take in life. And because, I, I mean, I tend to think maybe this is a little vain, um, but I do tend to think that because I've lived in XYZ countries and I've had mm -hmm. XYZ experiences, my viewpoint on what it is that I'm able to do was just a bit wider. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. So it's just uh, like my horizon was maybe not 360, but surely 180. Cool, cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. That We're added, gonna... uh, added a few more degrees in the... Like yeah, visual. a little here, a little there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, okay, we have another thing. Mm, this is a comment from our very active student, by the way. Startup can be taken as an opportunity to be more experienced than you move on. I really like that, being humble and take it step by step, by step to reach your big goals. So that's the comment uh, for you. Thank you. Yeah, this guy's been paying attention. Yeah, he That's always he always does, really. He wants that gift. <laughs> <laughs> I think he already he already won it once. So right. okay, the second thing is what holds more weightage for employers in Poland? How you scored in exams or how you crack the interview? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. such a good question. Yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe I'm not the very best person to answer that because I came to Poland already with three years of work experience. So I was, nobody cared for my studies when I was sort of moving here. But uh, when I was just starting my first job, um, I mean, at the end of the day, it's always about the interview. It's how yeah. you can sell yourselves. Like that's, that's it. And it depends on how you're going to pivot that CV, how you're going to pivot that experience. Are you going to be, are you going to be vibing with your hiring manager? Because this is a person you're going to be working with for foreseeable future. So you really have to be aligned. Mm -hmm. right. um, yes, yeah, so I think it's a, it's mostly about the interviews. I mean, grades are important. There are some, if you're looking, especially at a corporate career for, for sure, they're looking at what university you finished, what is your GPA and, and all that stuff. Um, 
in like smaller companies nobody cares for for what you've done they just care are you agile, agile are you able to like react fast enough to to change right so okay okay depends on the and uh, I, I had a question in mind that when you are cracking an interview mm -hmm. okay when you're just making an attempt mm -hmm. so is it better to be superficially charming and the way you said that you have to sell yourself or is it better to be like honest because if I know something I know something if I don't I don't so which which path to take oh well I mean it depends on how I mean I work in sales so there is mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a part of my job that I am I'm, I'm constantly you know on that uh, bingo <laughs> game <laughs> um, I think if you're going to be dishonest, it's going to come out eventually. Um, so you can, uh, you know, you can say that you were an A-star student when you were just, you know, barely passing uh, your exams and uh, you're setting expectations higher than you can achieve. Right, right. What that's going to do to you, that's going to put a crazy, like, strain on you because there's all that pressure already built up. Yeah. Pressure to perform. So I'm generally not a fan of building up expectations for people because I think this is it's just very nasty to fall off mm -hmm. that cloud. Okay. At the same okay. time, do you? I don't think um, any of us think that when you're coming to the interview with this high grades and you're behaving as a B word, uh, it ends up with a with a good conclusion. Right. Because uh, well, you're honest, but if you're a B word. <laughs> It's still it's not going to happen. Yeah, it's not going to happen. So, yeah. do you think it's all about some communication skills or communication yeah. feelings more than the knowledge that you got at the university themselves? Um that's a very good question. I think it uh there is no straight answer to that, I think. Um because at least in my view, uh people work with people. Mhm. Mm that's that's all, that's all it is at the end of the day. Uh, you can be skilled, you can be great, you can have portfolio for a million pages of whatever the stuff that you've achieved, and you know awards upon awards. But if you go there and you can't put a sentence together, or you know you're you're just you're not fitting the whole agenda of what mm -hmm. this company is looking to achieve and this position is looking to to do you're not going to get it no matter your you know regalia right. so it's a mix i think it's me yeah. do you think it is very crucial and important to find your place in the company like the right place the right people and the right everything because you, you might be very very educated but you're just not going to feel well in this company and you're going to have a lot of i don't know crisis in, inside of it but at the other company you're going to be just absolutely perfect but um, mm -hmm. can i add something to that go but when you're a fresh graduate student mm -hmm. you don't really know what is going to be good for you and what's going to be bad for you right do you agree on that i that, do 100%. yeah so like how how would you like to answer that question <laughs> i think i mean <laughs> we're killing this <laughs> guest today with the questions <laughs> like no no really? i like i like it i like it keep grilling <laughs> um I think there is a lot you have like this is trial and error right you have to go and you have to try and but also you I guess you need to be in a place where you're trusting yourself now yeah and if you're going there and your intuition is telling you girl run this is <laughs> this is a shit show and you're not gonna have fun there uh you run and and you, and you, you run fast and you run fast <laughs> exactly yeah. um so there's there's that bit but also I think uh especially maybe for like Eastern European mind uh, because you know a lot of uh, I know we didn't we said we're not going to talk about philosophy and stuff but here I am <laughs> uh, because a lot of the like life and work it's you don't have this idea that you're meant to enjoy your job you know right. it's a struggle it's there to make money usually it's there to also cause you some problems yeah and that's the that's the vibe but is it really worth it I mean I don't think so at least in not I, I don't believe so and there's I guess the important bit to to realize is that there is trillions of opportunities. For one, you as an employee, there is I don't know 15 companies hunting every day. Yeah. So you can't be in a place that oh this is the only like this is the only chance I have. I have to struggle. I have to pull through. Like I hate it. I hate everybody, but like I have to pull through. Right, so right. be sensible, right? It's always a trade-off. You can't be like, oh my god, they like uh, uh, told me off or something objectively stupid I've done. No, this is not my place right now. I'm going to run because this yeah. is the a quitter mentality. Yes. But also, are you going to exhaust yourself and kill yourself over stuff that is not worth it? I mean, you can, yeah. but... I'm going to ask you one more thing. So when you're working, in the, because headhunters, they're always here. They're always looking for some cool people from the corporations and not only. Mm -hmm. So... Just let us assume that there is a situation that uh, you're having a conflict or you don't have any conflict, but you're f just fired. And 
what do you suggest and not I'm gonna put it that way do you think there is a correlation between the way you're exiting the company uh, and the opportunity of your next employee to hire you so what I'm saying is mm -hmm. that do you need to quit kindly and happily and with a good relations with everyone in the company that you're quitting a hundred percent yes i mean yes. warsaw is tiny <laughs> it is so small once you start seeing like how tiny is the job market you understand you can't uh, you know <laughs> you can't poop where you eat and this is this is a big learning uh, plus a lot of employers what they do they they take the references uh, exactly exactly employers. i just wanted to point that out because i think it's a very important thing for students to know when you're applying for a job and you're getting the first job don't really be yeah. <laughs> a b word again e even even in the interview when you are giving an interview for a new company they will ask why did you qu quit your next job so you cannot just answer them because my boss was a you know a word so we're doing this today <laughs> so often <laughs> so like always you have to just uh quit the company in good terms and even if you didn't quit the company in the good terms you have to give up like there was no beef there so yeah but also you gotta be strategic about whom you're given as your reference yeah. yeah if this is someone you did have a beef with and you you know that these people are likely to mess with your application give you know your immediate uh, work colleague that you like you were working well with Mm -hmm. that's all exactly yeah. that, that's that's i think that's very uh, important questions that we need to talk about with our students Cool, we're going to the next question. Do you believe in a lifetime job will, will for sure help you to master everything you're doing and gain more experience or it is better to change job depends on what you're feeling? Maybe have some internships, but mm. what you're gonna do in, ah, okay, so that's another thing. Yeah, this is this. Okay, so it's a question whether or not you go and you sort of stay for the whole life at one place. Kind of, and yeah. Mm -hmm. If you believe in this whole life uh, work when, where you work for like 55 years or something. Oh, Jesus, no, I don't. I mean, I've, I've been in the workforce for seven years and I've already changed four companies. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> that's not my story. And I don't think this is generally a story right now because we're spoiled by choice. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. bombarded with choices. And it's so difficult not to fall into that temptation and also not to take the chance. Like, I, I think this lifelong journey, you know, working in um, uh, XYZ place in a factory or in a... Uh, a hospital or whatever this is mm -hmm. the story of our parents yeah this right. is not the story of us anymore at right. least i don't believe so not in the world of business maybe if you're a school teacher or maybe if you're again like a, a nurse or something sure i could i can understand that but in the world of business i mean what like do you know many companies that live for that long right <laughs> right right so like do you think that uh, the offering of choice affects the decision making in a positive or a negative way like the more choices you have because there was a survey done in the supermarket when the people were given seven jars they couldn't really select but there were only two so they were it was easier for them to select which one are they going to pick is it mm. the same in job market i think it's a question of personal responsibility right mm -hmm. yeah because if you have uh, like you know there is you know ibm and intel hiring yeah. done nobody else on the market of uh, of warsaw then it's like, okay, I mean, the fate chose for me, I'm going to IBM. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're not taking responsibility for your life. But if there's like, uh, I don't know, 100 vacancies op opening up every day, then it, it is your choice. Yeah. It is your responsibility and it is your active move that you need to make in order to get hired. Right. So um, the, the, the choice, the personal choice option is harder, right? Because responsibility generally is not mm -hmm. a very easy yeah. thing. But... Uh, the limited choice i mean this smells to me like soviet union and i mean i wasn't born when soviet union was around so I'm, i don't know but from the vibes i'm getting there like i would never want to be in that place so <laughs> you know that choice is of, great that's a lot of luck that you were born i know there. i know <laughs> thank you parents for waiting a little bit <laughs> so blessed okay moving to the next one uh we have a student who is asking but what you're gonna do in this gap year isn't it just a waste of time a year i think we already discussed this yeah and uh so you don't think that this is a waste of the time i think that's an excellent opportunity strategically as better uh I, I don't th i mean i don't think there's just generally a notion of wasting time uh but it, it is my personal belief i'm not going to go into philosophy of that all um but i mean there's so many other cool things that you can do there's so many programs and volunteer like volunteering things and whatever else and like low paid things just for you to go and travel and experience stuff i mean 
the world really truly is your oyster. It's not limited by, you know, going on the steps, bachelor, master, work, work, whatever happens after work. I don't know. <laughs> Some more work. Uh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I, I think there's so much more to life mm -hmm. than that. And this is, this is the mentality because I'm sure if you go like, I, I mean, I'm not an example of that. I didn't have a gap year. I, I went straight, straight, straight off to work. Here I am. But I wish I did. I think we're gonna we're gonna have a guest who's gonna tell us a little bit about the gap year. Someone who did it, because I think it's mm -hmm. a lot of students don't really. Um, um, they have this extremes. Mm -hmm. Just fifty feet, for example, half of them think that it's just a waste of the time and it's very stupid. When some of the friends go and take the gap year, and it's just uh, stupid. And uh, uh, when I was a student, I, I was having a lot of conversations with my friends about mm -hmm. that, and I was like, gap year you're talking about no we just have to go in you know, and get some masters and stuff but yeah you, you, you i absolutely agree that you don't have this exact path right now you mm -hmm. can change the places with the work and the master and and whatever exactly. and even the bachelor you can go and work and then go to bachelor but, exactly uh, yeah here we are talking about the taking the gap year by choice not by necessity Mm -hmm. right. Exactly. So that would be better. Like if you're taking gap year just to explore some things, because see, you finished your bachelor's for three hard years mm -hmm. and there is nothing that childish left in you when it was there in high school. So maybe just uh, rejuvenate that guy and come up with more energy for your master's. So that's uh, that's the point I think you're trying to make and here. And with the responsibility, I really yeah, like yeah, the exactly. point about the responsibility that you are going there with the responsibility and the responsibility is hard. I just really yeah, like that point. Uh, okay, we're going and um, we have just an opinion. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much, Anas, for being that active. I just want to say thank you to you, officially. Yeah. Uh, so he claims that better saying, "I don't know, but I'm gonna learn about that, and I'm not gonna, and I'm gonna get the answer for it," than to pretend that you know. I think uh, it was reference to the um, interview stuff that we yeah, were talking yeah. about. And he also said that someone said, "The more choices you have, the more you feel you choose the wrong one." And yeah, uh, yeah that's the reference to you to the thing that we were talking about too. All right. Um, yeah, we have one more question. I think it's going to be very interesting for you to answer. And this is an interesting for, an, uh, question from the Instagram and it says, do you... Specific. Where's the question? I think, do you have? Do you have? Which one? Okay. This one? Do you think, um, do you have a specific time that you think you should work in a company or do you recommend changing work sites or work areas? Okay, let me see if I got it right. Uh, AKA, is there like a minimum amount of time you need to sit in a in a given position in a given mm -hmm. company? Kind of, like changing yeah. departments, I think. The and changing this, the, yeah, the, like the point in of the company, like say, or whatever. Um, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I, I did have like a, a, a lot of changes when I was in Latvia, and when I was just starting to apply for newer company, it just looked shady. Mm -hmm. It does look shady if you've got five months here and six months there and blah blah blah. Yeah. blah. So it's, I mean, as a rule of thumb, it's people still would probably look at the fact like, okay, does she have at least a year, he or she, uh, or in a, in a given company you within the company, sure. You can change the positions and whatever else. I mean, um, people understand that if, if you're great, right. Mm -hmm. And people just keep bumping you up to different, different departments, it works in your favor, but you know, jumping from a company to a company, like eight months Monkey in, branching. like whatever, mm -hmm. this is, it, it just looks shady. It does. Okay. Okay. Well, mm, right. I have another question from my side. Um, you finished economics. Mm -hmm. That's a very common question that we get from students sometimes. Uh, does this economics and business economics knowledge help you? You're working in sales. So... <laughs> That's a <laughs> Tell us something about that. That's a very good question. That's a very good question. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful for my academic experience, but um, I'm, I mean, I can count. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a great skill. I've Dr. Mastered. Beck is clapping. So. <laughs> yeah, that's all well done. <laughs> good girl. <laughs> um, yeah, so I can, I can do some basic maths, uh, you know. Um, but I'm not using like I'm not count like I I don't count the I don't know the interest rates you know what's the what's the yeah, but, and like but do you else. think it broadened your um, general understanding of the world and uh, life people whatever for sure from macro perspective for sure I mean I'm general I was a fan of macroeconomics through and through so like that area I'm still interested in to this day uh, but I think what like what bachelor studies gave me personally the most is this ability to consume crazy amounts of information very fast process that move on 
Do you know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. not at the great skill, I suppose, that we're getting here as a yeah. student. So, hundred percent, hundred percent, because you know you're coming like it's it's a very demanding program, objectively very demanding program. Um, and then you know, at a workplace, you're also expected to learn a lot, to learn fast, yeah. especially if you're just entering the workforce. So if you already have that skill mastered of like quick learning and ability to like really hard like work hard, I think this is great. So just a point that I want to make for the students. Getting your education at bachelor, even at business economics, that really sounds like the hardest uh, faculty from, from what we hear, from the, gra from the alumnus. This is not just about getting the knowledge, but about getting the skills that you mm -hmm. can use in the future to proceed and to process the information that you are getting whenever you're going to work wherever you're going to work. Correct. So exactly, exactly. I think that's very important. Yeah, that's very important. And there's one more thing. When you come to the university, it's not like you're just uh, like filtering out information. Mm -hmm. Very important point. University is meant to do that. Mm -hmm. But also, how are you going to like develop your communication skills by taking the projects, by presenting to your class in the first place? It's not like you are sleeping in the bed and next day you wake up and you are just an ex excellent communicator. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. So missing out on projects and just trying to hide it just because of this self-sabotaging behavior. I don't want to take this project because it's it really it gives me nerves. It's good that it gives you nerves so that you can be confident tomorrow because mm -hmm. the the people have this illusion that the confidence first you have to be confident to do something. No, it's not like that. First you have to do something and then the confidence come. Yeah. So exactly that's uh, that's why university education is not important not just the facts that okay I'm learning about the GDP of uh, Kenya and maybe I have somebody in the market tomorrow ask me. It's not about that. It's about uh, growing in a circle, networking, com developing communication skills and then just going on for your way. But yeah. if you if you had to choose the faculty once again, uh, would it be the same or would you go for another one? No, yeah. I wouldn't change a thing. Nice. Yeah, that's that's nice. And you're working surviving. in sales now. You're working in a uh, different uh, different stuff you're not doing science you're not doing economics but uh, you still think it was valuable that's nice but um, coming back to your uh, time when you were a student mm -hmm. of Lazarsk University so basically of the bachelor mm -hmm. seven years ago mm. seven years ago mm. um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, so you came here to the university today Mm -hmm. uh, what was, when was the last time when you were at the university? Seven, Seven years, years ago. ago. <laughs> how, do, how does it feel? How does it feel? Yeah, well, we're just wondering. Man, it felt eclectic. <laughs> it felt real, like, it felt so weird. I mean, because I know that, like, behind, like, there, I mean, there's this room, first and foremost, like, what? <laughs> um, but then, you know, you still have the, the green, like, whatever, yeah. uh, doors. Yeah. And the sectors are still the same. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. There's, like, this place I was getting kebab at. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is cool. This is great memories. Um, but it does it does feel eclectic because, you know, time moves on. And, like, you know, we spoke before the interview about yeah. all the changes that happened yeah. like, to the lectures and all. And I was like, Jesus Christ, seven years is a long time, man. <laughs> it is. Uh, but it, feel, it feels good to be back. I mean, I, I did enjoy my time here thoroughly and uh, I've made some amazing friendships here I've learned some great things so it's uh, it's great it's great to be back really truly that's cool. awesome that's so really cool. how about we jump to the fun part now oh yeah so tell us about your hobbies <laughs> oh that's some go. personal question no more uh, there, there has been a lot of work thing going on here so let's come to the fun part so I actually had one more serious question you just broke my whole strategy I just I just cannot wait we were to just <laughs> on a nice wave of the serious okay, talks okay. and you just broke everything yeah, right? yeah, let, yeah, let, let's yeah. jump back on that wave okay I'm ready okay. just ready one one question okay, here we go if <laughs> okay so coming back to this 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 time when you were a student mm -hmm. um, what would you change back that time because I wanted to ask that question. Yeah, okay. You just when really I want firstly, her to change. When it. I firstly <laughs> invited this girl, I wanted to ask this question. Um, yeah, what would I change? I think I would just be a bit more relaxed. Because I was on a panic a patrol. wonderful, wonderful thing to say. Piece of advice. Yeah, yeah. Chill. Chill, chill. I mean, a student years, it's... I don't want to say like, oh, it's the time of your life. Because, you know, once you graduate and you're 20-something, your life is over. It's not. <laughs> it's great. Uh, but also, like, chill. Have fun, you know. Go on. I mean, right now it's coronavirus. And I'm so sorry that this is the experience people are having. But uh, it's going to be over eventually. Go on parties. Go on Erasmus. Go on Erasmus. For the love of me, go on Erasmus. 100%. 
cool. We, we, we had a guest, actually, um, two guests uh, ago, and we were talking about this Erasmus program and about the fact that actually even now people can go to Erasmus through the computers and they can just experience the educational but you well, don't go there for exactly, the yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, exactly. <laughs> what is this? Uh, yeah. Online changing. You don't so get a drunk, you know, to, to get drunk with yeah. people from different countries. So what's the point of Russia? Exactly. Then? Getting drunk okay. is the point. <laughs> <laughs> it is though. It is. It's the unwritten rule. So people just be relaxed. Listen to a wonderful, smart woman and be relaxed because yeah, yeah, classes are important. Exams are important. Do you, by the way, agree on the fact, this is my personal, our personal okay. actually theory that the more you relax, the easier it is to prepare for this hardcore stuff and to pass it and just go and, and, and live your life. A million percent. So people just yeah. be relaxed because we, we honestly experience, you know, some talkings with the students when they're like, shaking, honestly shaking. shaking and no, we, we, we're just very, very afraid. And it, that's going to finish eventually, right? Th that's going to finish. And then, you know, like a, a good question, a friend once told me, you need to ask yourself in a year's time, will this matter to me? Yeah. yeah what i'm going through right now i'm so panicked i'm losing i'm losing my shit over this will it matter in a year if it will you i mean win. you can lose your stuff right but yeah. if it won't another thing just the last one then we go to your fun okay. part um <laughs> do you think if you so that you have to learn to um manage the stress during the exams or whatever because later when you're entering the labor market uh you're gonna be really really in your pants because of any single stress that you're going to face during the work. So it is very important to learn how to do this. It is important at least. I think you need to learn how to manage stress in a sense of like deciphering where you need to like lose your neurons over what you need to lose your neurons over and what you don't need to lose your you know neurons okay. over. That's I think I think in that way because stress is an integral part of our life. You will never ever get rid of that. Yeah. And the older you grow, the more responsibilities uh, sort of hanging on your shoulders, the bigger is the stress. Mm -hmm. Um and it's just a matter of how are you able because I, I do truly believe that to these students whether or not they're gonna pass this exam today is a matter of life and death. Yeah. Seven years fast forward, I mean <laughs> frankly speaking do you know what i mean there is another thing that you're thinking yeah. about um but the magnitude to you is always as big and as crazy as i don't know it was i don't know back in school when you had to go and read a poem in front of the whole oh, class which yeah, was yeah, a exactly. horrendous experience as well. yeah do you know what i mean <laughs> I do. um so yeah just uh, learn how to manage stress okay okay thank you yeah. dipancho you're free now here we come <laughs> to the hobbies so Ooh, okay. yes Tell us about some interesting hobbies. What do you do in your free time? Uh, if you had to name, when I say the word hobby, what is the one thing which just pops up in your head? Okay. Let's start with that. Okay, so when I think of a hobby, this is something that where I relax my brain, mm -hmm. right? So this is something that I do to just relax and have fun and just be on the chill, on the chill pill. Um, so what I do for that, I mean, I'm... Uh, uh, it's like, you know, I hate when people say, oh, I do reading for a hobby because it's like, seriously, <laughs> this is a basic skill you need to master <laughs> in 21st century. You have got to know how to read. But I mean, I do. I do. So it's great. <laughs> um, but I'm, uh, as, as a hobby, I took up this um, evolutionary psychology thing. Okay. Um, so I'm reading up a lot about that. So I'm just infinitely curious how our brain developed from the evolutionary perspective and how it sort of influenced our psyche. Have you read the book uh, Sapiens? Oh, 100%. Yeah, of course. it's just like a Bible. For it's, it's a really great start yeah. and it's a, yeah, it's a really nice explanation to, mm, to that notion. Um, so I do that and uh, since the pandemic began, I've also taken up DJing, so. Oh. Nice! That's yeah. the thing you we see, have to there's, talk there's about. You see, there's a cool woman with all this work experience, here comes the DJ. <laughs> so, and yeah. also DJ. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about this DJ stuff. Yeah. We have actually like from seven to ten minutes to go and we want to hear about your dj stuff and okay. we need to choose the best student and then oh. we're free to go all right great i mean djing thing was very random right i just uh, uh i was putting together playlists sharing it with my friends and they were like dash you like why don't you dj like what's up with that and i was like <laughs> why don't i what <laughs> it was so <laughs> random and then you know and then it's sort of like this conversation kept reappearing uh, reappearing reappearing and i was like um I mean, I can at least give it a try. I've never really seen this this whole console thing or whatever is that. No, I don't honestly know what they like. I mean, I didn't know what they they did before, and so it, it took up the courses. 
uh, and I was like, this is such a vibe. It's like, it's, it's really cool. It's really cool because this is how I, I relax. Nice. Um, and then it was just a matter of buying myself some equipment and now throwing private parties for my friends. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Are you planning to go uh, public when the pandemic is over? Oof, I think around this time, actually, during the pandemics, there's a lot of new DJs that appeared because, that's, you know, uh, you, you listen to some electronic music and, uh, you know, the next day you wake up and you're like, I'm going to be a DJ about here's the deep house up on this. But what, what kind know. of music do you listen yeah, to? What's, what's your favorite? Mm, mostly, mostly deep house. Yeah. Okay. Around nice. that. Deep house. Deep house, like her name. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's that. <laughs> That's well, but that's that's really really great because it's uh, different from what you do in in, in your life. Yeah. I mean, your working life. So I think that's a very very nice thing. I've I've, I've I've I actually know one DJ, but I I never understand how you cope with this all this stuff, you know, and these buttons and these two things, and mm -hmm. I just well now you know two. Well, because this is like really a kind of an econometric model for me when these yeah. people just mix <laughs> mix yeah, the yeah, songs yeah. and how does it sound that normal? like one song so you need it to doesn't speak. always <laughs> it doesn't always <laughs> so uh we're looking forward to go to some place to where some you're party. gonna be djing yeah and have some fun with the deep uh and, and the deep the house, house music, music. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes i'll be sure to invite you guys uh okay we have actually four minutes to go mm -hmm. mm, and we have to choose the best question yeah okay do you know who will it be uh, um you know, I, I, I think the best question was about, um, a, you know, there was this question whether or not the fact that I've sort of lived in a few countries, whether that somehow broadened my horizons. How the experience work. of moving countries can help you to find the starting point of a work life. Yeah. That was the mm -hmm. question. I, I think, I, I mean, it really made me think hard. So. Well, congratulations. The guy who asked this question, you know where to find the... Um, What's called the package from Lazarsky University Marketing Department. <laughs> Thank you very much for the question, and the winner is here. Yeah. Let's hope this guy is not the same as the previous one because I think I'm no, 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 he's not the same. Is he oh, reselling yeah. it on a leg? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The leg? <laughs> he's, just, <laughs> he's just giving out these awesome questions well, because and collecting the rewards. We have cool stuff in this marketing department. You know, they give us some some cool dope stuff really yeah okay, okay so you can send it on allegro or whatever just <laughs> <laughs> make some cash uh, <laughs> we're gonna finish with one last question what is it's a very like you know not creative question but still right. what can you advise all of the fresh people who are just right now at the bachelor oh okay mm. Oh, this, uh, I mean, I don't want to sound like an old bag right now, <laughs> but I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the old bag vibe right now. So I'm just going to go with it. Um, I mean, it's, it's really great time. The student years, the freedom that you're doing this, you know, the notion that you're finally, you know, out of the parents nest and you're just yeah. doing your thing or whatever else you're getting this first sips of freedom, enjoy them, enjoy them yeah. to the fullest. Don't over, don't overthink, don't overstress about like random miscellaneous things. Um, just enjoy. I, I mean, I think student years are fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. So even the exams, even the hardest, right? Even, even the the hard bits, even the prep. I mean, you know, I I have a million trillion stories from my student times at Lazarski because I mean, I'm still th these are my best friends, the ones that I made here, uh, mm -hmm. my my girl gang. We're still super tight. We're still like. Um, really really good friends and there's a million million stupid stupid things that we've done yeah. super funny <laughs> insider jokes and I mean I cherish that I, I really cherish those moments so I think it's a just you know have fun have fun yeah collect those memories cool. collect those memories and have fun YOLO yeah yeah, yeah we actually have uh, another story of wonderful friendship uh, relationships here sitting because yeah. we actually met yeah. each other when we were exactly. in masters exactly. and till that day I cannot get rid of them so oh, there we go <laughs> same problem is with me <laughs> we, so yeah we, we met on the masters and like here we are doing these uh, little maneuvers all the time sometimes this that another and she's you know about her she's an excellent singer as well oh, actually yeah, I have oh. a, a music band so that's yeah. why I, I, I was uh, oh, curious 
curious so about this. Yeah, yeah, and actually, we we created this music band during my studies at Lazarsk University. Right, right. Actually, Which is just fantastic. Yeah, I shouldn't so, say that to boost her ego, but <laughs> you're good. <laughs> okay, so, so cool. another point of of Lazarsk University collecting united wonderful people from all around the world, and you know, with different hobbies and uh, wonderful people from this university, and we're super happy to have this opportunity to talk to them. Right. So, we have one minute left, and we have to close. Uh, the Lazarski Talks this episode and guys thank you very much for being with us we'll see you in two weeks we thank you for your questions we thank you for your activity thank you very much Dipancho thank you very much thank our you. wonderful so guest much. it was a pleasure to have you and we'll see you in two weeks bye bye <laughs>